We are back for another episode of the Pokemon Journeys Rewrite Season 2. We're in the home stretch, as everything this part of the season revolves around Ash making his way to the top of the battling world. Who will he face on the way to world champ? Well, stay tuned to find out. That's how we come this Ash and Go have arrived in Jubilife City, as they're on a mission for Professor Cerise. According to recent news reports, Jubilife City is experiencing an increase in nightmares, with many people seemingly waking up from panic attacks. The cause of these dreams is unknown, and so Cerise sent Ash and Go to investigate. Go believes this phenomenon has something to do with the legendary Pokemon Darkrai, as it's a Pokemon heavily affiliated with nightmares. But at this point, it's only speculation and they won't know anything for sure until they continue to investigate further. And so, the two ask around, trying to find any clues they can about the nightmares. It's here where the two run into a familiar face, one Ash hasn't seen in a long time. Dawn! It's Dawn! Ash! It's been a long time, how are you? Ash introduces Go and Dawn to each other, and the two begin to catch up. Ash learns Dawn is now a top coordinator, it is now traveling all around Sinnoh for exhibition performances. She tells Ash that she's going to participate in this year's Wallace Cup, hoping to show off her growth in a large-scale event. After hearing what Ash and Go are up to, she gets intrigued, and decides to lend them a helping hand. Go determines that the best course of action would be to camp out till night, as it's clear nothing in the daytime is helping them out. And with Go being a professor in training here, both Ash and Dawn agree that that's the best course of action too. And so the trio camp out, waiting for anything to occur, and eventually Ash catches a glimpse of a shadow, and so they run after it. Go and Dawn follow behind him, and eventually run into none other than Darkrai. Darkrai immediately attacks them, as the trio realize it has some sort of sinister aura around it. The three send out Lucario, Cinderace, and Piplum, engaging in battle with the Rampaging Legend. Despite their combined efforts, Darkrai easily tanks all their attacks, delivering powerful counters. Darkrai charges up a massive Shadow Ball, and it looks like things are at the end of the line. Garchomp, Dragon Pulse! That is until a certain someone appears. It's Cynthia, who causes the Darkrai to retreat. While it runs off, Cynthia spots something on it, most likely the source of its rampage. Cynthia comes over to the trio, making sure they're okay. Ash and Dawn are ecstatic to see Cynthia again, and Go is shocked by Ash knowing such a renowned trainer. They reconvene at the Pokemon Center, where Cynthia states she might have figured out the cause of Darkrai's rampage, as she saw something attached to the Pokemon. The Dreadplate. The, the Dreadplate? Dread That's the plate of Arceus. It's been said that when a Pokemon touches it, it transforms into a Dark-type. Now, if this truly is the case, the Darkrai's Dark-type power has increased thanks to the power from that plate. Now, based on that, the increased power is what's most likely causing the many nightmares. However, the question now is, how did Darkrai even get its hands on it? My thoughts exactly. What's most important is getting the plate off of Darkrai. That should, in theory, stop the rampage. Then let's do it! No time to lose! And so the group heads off to find Darkrai in the streets of Jubilife, and they eventually locate the Pokémon. It immediately attacks them, so the group send out their Pokémon, engaging in a raid battle. Darkrai is strong, and with the help of the two champions, the group is able to do a decent job of holding the Pokémon on their own. Eventually, Darkrai releases a burst of energy, sending Go and Dawn's Pokémon back, knocking them out. They're in bad condition, and Cynthia tells the two to take their Pokémon to the Pokémon Center immediately. And so Go and Dawn return their Pokémon and start running to the Pokémon Center. Let's just hope that Ash and Cynthia will be okay without us. 
No need to worry, they got this! Ash and Cynthia continue to combat Darkrai. It's a tough fight, but eventually Ash and Cynthia decide to unleash a combo attack, an aura sphere wrapped within a dragon pulse. The attack leaves Darkrai temporarily immobile, and Ash uses this opportunity to grab the Dreadplate from Darkrai, returning the Pokémon to normal. Darkrai looks at the two champs before it disappears. It's over. The nightmares... they're done. The next day, people have woken up feeling better than ever. Cynthia thanks the trio for their help, and says she's gonna take the Dreadplate back with her to research it. She then comes up to Ash. Ash, I better see you at the Masters Tournament. Heh, <laughs> don't worry. I intend to be there. Cynthia then bids the group farewell, and speaking of the Champions League, Ash receives a new notification. His next opponent is Flint of the Sinnoh Elite Four, with the battle taking place at the Sunny Shore Gym. Dawn decides to stick with Ash and Go for the next week while they're in Sinnoh, to help Ash prep for his next battle. It's finally time. The Sunny Shore Gym is packed as a champion and Elite Four member are about to duke it out. Volker watches from afar, ready to see how the two trainers he heavily respects will approach this battle. Ash and Flint then make their way to the stadium. Alright, Ash! Time to heat things up! If you want to be world champ so bad, you'll have to go through me! Bring it on! Flint's first Pokémon is Rapidash, going up against Ash's Staraptor. Both Pokémon are incredibly fast, and their attacks pack a punch. However, Staraptor's aerial mobility gains the upper hand. Flint tries to counter this by having Rapidash corner Staraptor with fire, but it's no use as Staraptor dodges and delivers a powerful attack, knocking Rapidash out and taking the win. Just what I'd expect! You sure don't disappoint! But I'm just getting started! Flint's second Pokémon is Magmortar, who is able to easily gain an upper hand against the weakened Pokémon, forcing Staraptor to fly right into a direct flamethrower due to its fatigue, causing the Pokémon to go down. Ash sends in Lucario, and wastes no time. As Lucario Mega evolves, with their aura the Pokémon gains a level of strength Magmortar cannot simply keep up with, the best it can do is degrade Lucario's strength little by little, but taking the Pokémon out just isn't plausible. Lucario lands several powerful attacks, taking Magmortar down, leaving Flint with just one Pokémon left. If you think I'm about to throw in the towel, you're dead wrong! Inferno! Let's do it! And Flint's final Pokémon is his Infernape, and oh boy is this thing scary. Despite Lucario's Mega Evolution and Aura capabilities, Infernape easily keeps up with the Pokémon, delivering powerful attacks that wither away Lucario's strength. It's a formidable opponent, as fired up as Flynn himself. It comes down to a clash between Aura Sphere and Flare Pulse, but Infernape overpowers the attack and lands a critical blow on Lucario, taking it out. Things are getting exciting, and I'm not done! Torterra! I choose you! Ash's final Pokémon is Torterra, who despite its type disadvantage is the perfect counter for Infernape. Flint's ace is ferocious, an attacker in every sense of the word, but Torterra is a tank, a steel wall ready to take any attack Infernape throws at it. For once, Torterra is able to use its slow speed to its advantage, as Infernape gets tired after attacking a consecutive amount of times. Torterra, using this moment of weakness, unleashes a barrage of attacks, knocking out Flint's final Pokémon. He's done it. Ash has won. Flint comes over to Ash. That battle was a blast! Sure was. Let's battle again someday. After the battle, the duo say farewell to Dawn, who is going to go train for the Wallace Cup, and the two decide to also leave Sinnoh and head back to Galar. 